this is just the sort of wildlife you might expect to find over most of rural Britain. The fact is, though, life in much of our countryside has suffered a catastrophic decline in recent times. And what you see here is, in large part, due to an ambitious project to restore nature to our beleaguered landscape. One of the core visions of the Simon King Wildlife Project. I know this land really well. I've lived in Somerset most of my life and in fact I made my first wildlife films when I was 17 years old in this area. And back then fields like these were full of life. There were lapwing nesting all over the place. At dusk you'd often see barn owls hunting the hay meadows. Uh, skylarks filled the air with their song. And now it's virtually all gone. How can this have happened? Well, it has a huge amount to do with the way we use the land. In an attempt to extract ever more food and finance from every last square metre of land, we're breaking our life support system. The Simon King Wildlife Project wants to change that. We've already started in a tiny way. Here at my home in Somerset, we began a land restoration project back in 2011. What was three pasture fields of very low value to wildlife has been given a green makeover. And the results have been dramatic. Species, rare or absent, have returned and bounced back with a vengeance. And a great indication of the overall health of the land has been the success of those at the top of the food chain. A good example came in early 2015 when a tawny owl family chose to nest in one of our nest boxes. Over the next couple of months, thousands of people followed their story online via our live cameras. Tawny owls are just one of the top predators that have benefited from the healthy ecosystem created by our land management practices. For these hunters, and many other predators to do well, it's important that there are lots of creatures in their territory that they can eat, like mice and voles. With that in mind, we've managed the grassland here to ensure these small mammals have food and refuge the year round. Grasses alone, though good for voles and some insects, aren't very rich in species diversity. For that, we developed wild flower meadows, with the help of this unassuming little plant. This is yellow rattle, and it's a real pioneer species when it comes to establishing a wild flower meadow in grassland. It's known as a hemiparasitic or semi-parasitic plant, and it gets some of its nutrition by tapping into the roots of surrounding grasses. As it does so, the grasses die back and give the surrounding wild flowers the opportunity to reach the sunlight. It's called yellow rattle because the seed pods when they're ripe, rattle. The wildflowers are a crucial part of the ecosystem here, attracting and supporting a plethora of insects and other bugs, which in turn feed an ever-expanding range of creatures that feed on them. The land restoration at Wild Meadows is aimed at creating as many different habitats within the 10 acres as possible. With this in mind, in 2013, we dug a lake. There's nothing like a body of still water to boost biodiversity. And the lake has proven to be a big hit with loads of newcomers to the patch. A healthy ecosystem is like anything in balance. The more pillars it has supporting it, the more able it is to survive and adapt to changes and challenges. We were lucky to have a lifeline already in place at Wild Meadows. A small river runs through the heart of the land. And while some creatures, 
like the otter family that use this waterway, were already here when we started, there's no doubt that they've thrived with the changes we've introduced. Most of these remarkable sightings have been captured thanks to our network of high-tech live cameras. Over the past two years, these have captured some astonishing and rarely recorded behaviour. And over 250,000 people worldwide have seen our streams online. Funny moments. Intimate views of family life. High drama. And life and death struggles. It's with these tools, the live cameras and the films we make out of the material we record from them, that we hope to engage people, young and old, in the value of our natural heritage. I think it's a tragic reflection of our disconnect from the natural world when more young people today think of a Blackberry as an electronic device than as a wild fruit. This has been reflected by changes to the Oxford Junior Dictionary in which words like adder, buttercup and kingfisher have been dropped to make room for blog, voicemail and celebrity. We want to halt this trend toward a further distancing between our societies and the natural world by developing online learning tools that help bridge the divide with up-to-date technologies. But we're not stopping with the virtual experience. In our land restoration sites, we're encouraging people, especially the younger generation, to experience the fascination and beauty of the real world firsthand with a pioneering education program that integrates field trips, to the online resources back in the classroom. Wild Meadows has been developed as a template to illustrate just how quickly the natural world can recover if you give it the space and the resources it requires. And a lot of what we've done here works in harmony with organic, non-intensive farming practices. Being in touch with nature isn't just good for our sense of well-being, it's positively good for our health. In fact, without a thriving natural environment, our own future looks very bleak indeed. The Simon King Wildlife Project has the vision and the tools to make a positive change. Please help us in any way you can. Thank you.